Hi, I'm John Molesky, host of Dialogue. Welcome to the set of Dialogue here at the Woodrow Wilson International Center for Scholars. We just finished taping a program that you could see eventually in a couple weeks uh, on MHZ networks and elsewhere uh, with David Greenberg. David is a professor at Rutgers University. He's also a fellow here at the Wilson Center working on a project called The Story of Spin. It's really interesting and we're going to ask David a few questions about it now to share with you. And my first question that we didn't discuss during the 30 minute interview is uh, how did you get interested in this subject matter? Well, my first book was on Nixon. It was a book called Nixon's Shadow, The History of an Image. Uh, and that book was really about how the disillusionment that we have felt in politics in my lifetime, in sort of the post-Nixon years, came not only from Watergate and that bond of trust being severed, but also from the pervasive sense that politics had just become this contest of images. Uh, and I thought Nixon had an instrumental role in that. Uh, and so what I did is I looked at Nixon as he was seen by a whole series of different groups throughout post-war American culture, and also at Nixon's own extreme attention to presidential image making. Uh, now I continue to believe that Nixon was a fundamental figure in this larger story of image making and spin. But as often happens to historians, you start studying one period and you realize there are antecedents earlier. And I realized there was a larger story to tell, a larger story of how presidents leading up to Nixon and as well as since Nixon uh, developed and refined this whole apparatus they have now of pollsters and TV consultants and speech writers uh, and makeup artists and lighting people to craft every pose, uh, to vet every message, uh, to make sure that whatever the president does is seen by the public in the most optimal way. Uh, and that is a story that I eventually traced back to Teddy Roosevelt. What's interesting about the Nixon example is when people think of this subject and they think of messaging or spin or whatever you want to call it, people will hold the Reagan White House up as masters of the craft, then Clinton took it to other places and other levels. But if they think about Richard Nixon, they often think about a guy who wasn't very good at it. But in some ways, his 68 campaign and his distrust or even disdain for the press created the template for this. Very much so. I mean, Nixon's career is fascinating because he has these great highs of image making and spin. The Checkers speech of 1952, where he saves his place. A little as dog named Trepper. Checkers. That's right. And we look before. back on that as this kind of hokey cornball thing. But at the time, it was incredibly successful. And people, the, the liberals and critics who attacked it, attacked it because Nixon was using these newfangled techniques of public relations and television to sort of hoodwink the American public. Um, you know, in 1960, he's seen as a failure because of his performance in the debates next to Kennedy, who's so much better on TV. But in 68, there's the Nixon comeback, where once again, he develops a new press strategy that helps him control which image on the nightly news is going to appear uh, each day on the campaign. And it helps kind of... Uh, solidify this idea of a new Nixon. He so, certainly learned the lessons of 1960. Yeah, yeah, although he can't always control it. I mean, one of my favorite Nixon stories is when he wants a photo shoot. Uh, he, he admires the Kennedys and he wants to look Kennedy-esque walking on the beach. So he calls all the cameramen to this bluff in San Clemente to wait for this uh, photo shoot on the beach and he comes out wearing trousers and wingtips. <laughs> so instead of looking Kennedy-esque, he looks like someone trying to seem Kennedy-esque. And so what I see is a, a growing public awareness of these techniques of spin and image making as well. Uh, that is to say, it's not the presence and politicians can't always fool us. We often see through it. We can critique it. We can applaud it if we think they're doing it well. We can uh, regret it if we think they're doing it poorly. You hear this with Obama a lot. Oh, you know, people who are Obama supporters, his problem is he's not a good communicator. Um, you know, that's not criticizing spin. That's sort of wanting spin wanting to be better done better. Spin. Yeah. yeah. Well, David, thanks. This is a terrific subject. And if you'd like to hear more from David on spin and the story of spin, come to our website, wilsoncenter.org. Look on the upper right-hand side of the screen. You'll see a tab for dialogue. Click that, and you can find your way to a complete 30-minute interview. Thanks.